Biden is wrong. R-O-N-G, wrong. He wants you to think that this inflation that we're dealing with 7.9%, the highest in 40 years, is actually the fault of Vladimir Putin. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sorry, Joe Biden. That's your fault. That's the Fed's fault. The inflation that's coming our way, because it's going to get so much worse, then you can look at Vladimir Putin and the energy crisis. But guys, you got to own this. This is your 7.9% of an increase in consumer prices. Don't try and spin it. You're not going to believe what he's saying. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trish Regan Show. It's good to have you here. A quick reminder that portions of today's program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There has never been a better time to invest in precious metals. You know I've been saying forever, you've got to have gold in your portfolio. It's the one way you can help hedge against all the inflation that's coming your way. So call my friends, call Charles over at LegacyPMInvestments.com. He's been on the program before. Great guy, family-run business, LegacyPMInvestments.com. They can help you with your gold investing and they'll take very good care of you, I promise. Anyway, I wanna talk about this inflation that we're seeing and why, why it is that the president is, is thinking he can somehow pin this on Putin. Nice try, you know what, we're smarter than that. The American people know that prices have actually been going up, up, up and away ever since actually, Joe, you came to office. I mean, if we really wanna pick this apart, we can point out that there was a second stimulus check added in the summer of 2020, before Joe Biden came to office. I pounded the table back then. If you watched this show back then, you would have known to, by the way, <laughs> prepare yourself for inflation. Real estate, gold, uh, commodities, these are all the things that, that should be invested in if you're worried about inflation. I was pounding the table then. And then by what, January of 2021, when Joe Biden came to office, we had 1.7% inflation. 1.7%. Now we have 7.9%. Ladies and gentlemen, considering the fact that we didn't go anywhere for years, you couldn't get any inflation, and now all of a sudden we go from 1.7 to 7.9, I think we've got a problem. And that problem is Joe Biden and Jerome Powell. It's a combo effect, you see. This is, a, this is very concerning. You know, you, you had Joe Biden come in and offer another round of stimulus checks as soon as he got into office. So that was three stimulus checks. Plus you had that $1.9 trillion quote unquote infrastructure bill. And of course he wants a lot more. He still wants that bill back better, which fortunately isn't seeing the light of day. Um, so the 1.9 trillion that also contributed to all the money in the system. I mean, let me tell you, if you're worried about inflation, do you think the answer is to throw more money or to maybe pull some away. <laughs> you know, I, I bet you a five-year-old could figure this out. And yet the, the whiz kids, <laughs> or actually they're quite old, I shouldn't refer to them as kids, at the Federal Reserve, uh, they all think that the answer is just keep printing. We actually have, since COVID, uh, a Federal Reserve that, that printed so much money, they put so much more into circulation. I mean, the numbers are pretty staggering. It's like 40% more dollars into circulation because they were worried about a dry up, you know, in, in liquidity and the credit markets would get restricted, etc. So they artificially suppressed interest rates, thereby creating, you know, more money to go back and forth. And uh, what they effectively did was help drive inflation higher. Now, Jerome Powell admitted as much. He basically said, look, if we thought inflation was going to be this sticky, then we would have moved sooner on rates. We would have moved sooner on, on scaling back all this money printing. But they didn't. And they had a president and a, a bunch of lawmakers who wanted to print even more money. So don't sit there and tell me it's Vladimir Putin's fault. A lot of things are his fault, including all the death and destruction and the murder. And I'm I'm just devastated by it. I am just disgusted by it. And no one, no one should defend this guy at all. Um, what has happened is horrific and we need to, to emphasize these are war crimes. We can talk about that in a second, but the inflation that's happened thus far, that's all on Biden and the Fed. The inflation that's about to happen, well, you know, it still is on Biden and the Fed, but that can also be blamed on Putin. And that can be blamed on our stupid energy policy that has made it difficult for energy investors to pour money into new projects to drill here at home. Because when you have an administration that's like, no, 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 we only want green energy. Well, then 
how are you ever going to encourage people to invest in these drilling projects? You can't, especially when they killed something like Keystone. Think about that, 10 years right down the drain because Biden comes along and kills it. So you think investors actually want to put more money into drilling projects in the U.S.? No, they haven't wanted to. And so far, the administration hasn't given us any signal that they're willing to be more hospitable to the idea of drilling at home. Look, you're going to have to be, okay? Because $9 at the gas pumps just isn't going to work for people. You are going to kill the American economy. We're going to talk about this coming up a little bit later this afternoon on Locals. Go to my Locals channel, trishregan.locals.com. You can sign up, participate in the conversation. We, we have a, a wonderful time there, a great group of people. So I encourage you to do that, trishregan.locals.com. Join the community, join the conversation, and uh, I'll be seeing you there later today. But again, you can't blame Putin for this inflation right now. We need, to, we need to be logical. We need to be thoughtful about where we're heading. And we can't just you know, have our, our, our head in the clouds and say that we just want green energy. I, I got nothing against green energy. Elon Musk, for goodness sakes, who's all about green energy and his future depends on those EVs. He's saying, you got to drill here in the U.S. I mean, let's have some consistency. We need that consistency. There's another thing that we can do, that we should do, and that's open up our relationship with Venezuela. Repair our relationship with Venezuela. Work with Venezuela to have a democracy there, to get the Russians the heck out of there, and by the way, to open up the oil fields there. They're sitting on 300 billion, the largest number of proven reserves, 300 billion barrels of oil in the ground. Three hours from Miami. I mean, this, this makes sense, people. We need to start thinking about what makes sense because if not, we have more inflation coming. Lots of inflation coming. A quick word from one of our sponsors, what new sponsor I'm so happy to introduce to you because you know I'm all about health and wellness. I'm all about taking vitamins. But you know what? Taking vitamins the traditional way is not actually the best way to do it. Um, you know, doctors have said to me in the past, you know, make sure you drink a glass of milk with that vitamin D or make sure you take your vitamins with a, a dinner that includes vegetables, etc. Why? Because you can't really digest this stuff traditional vitamins in the way that you might think. You don't actually absorb the nutrients, which is why this company is super interesting. Healthy Cell, they created a patent pending ingestible gel that's clinically proven to have 165% more absorption than tablets. And these are physician formulated supplements. They taste really good actually. You can mix them in water, you can just down them. They come in these little gel packets in these very like easy containers. And so you just rip off the top, you down it, and you get your vitamins that way. Ingestible, again, 165% more absorption according to the studies. Um, they have uh, no chemical binders, no fillers, no coatings, all those things that come with vitamins. So that's really good news. And they taste, as I said, they taste really good. So go to healthycell.com. Uh, some of the, the folks in the conservative audience will know, I think Dr. Peter McCullough has backed these. Um, they're, they're really interesting to check out. So you can get a discount if you go there now. Use my name. Go to healthycell.com. Oh, we forgot to put this on the banner there, but uh, if you're listening, you hear me. Use the discount code TRISH because you will get 20% off. So go to healthycell.com, use discount code TRISH, my name, and you will get 20% off your, your vitamins. I mean, it's really kind of a neat thing to do. It's called Immune Super Booster. That's the one that I use. Anyway, turning back to all this inflation that we're dealing with, we need new sources of oil. Let's not kid ourselves, okay? We need to get the Russians out of our hemisphere. Let's not kid ourselves. And we need to do what we can to open up the economy and to bring capitalism and democracy in good, positive ways to a country that's our neighbor, Venezuela. I actually think, and my sources indicate, I've got a lot of sources uh, on all sides, I should point out, of the Venezuela situation, and my sources are suggesting that the Maduro government is very open to doing a deal with the United States in which we could ensure the Russians stay the heck away from that area, in which we could ensure that the oil could be pumped by U.S. and European companies, which would be phenomenal in terms of helping us mitigate what I think is going to be a recession if we're looking at $9 a gallon at the gas pumps. And they've assured us that we can have a, 
all of our people in there to, to make sure that there are free and fair elections. In fact, they've actually done quite a bit thus far and had the Carter, Carter Foundation in there watching elections. I may have told you the other day that in one of the gubernatorial races, Hugo Chavez's brother lost, which is a good sign because if this was, you know, a Cuban style government, uh, they wouldn't have allowed him to lose. So there are indications that they're willing to open up the economy. They're willing to make sure that there's a free and fair election process. And from our standpoint, we get the Russians the heck out of there and we get access to the oil. It feels like a really, really smart deal to do. We'll see whether or not it happens, but if you want to avoid a U.S. recession, I would suggest making sure we have a three-prong approach. You want green energy. You want drilling in America and you want alternative sources of energy, especially from countries that we have a lot culturally in common with, like Venezuela. This is kind of a, an easier fix, I think. And, and part of it is because the groundwork has been laid. In other words, the Trump administration went in there. They put all these sanctions in, which actually forced the country in some ways to, to do more of what we needed them to do. Right? They needed to kind of transition. Um, it, they, they brought in a, 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 an economist with, with, with capitalist principles to help reorg, if you would, the situation. So uh, that's been helpful. And you combine that with um, the need for them now to, to do business with us. I, I think we have a real shot at helping to get our own hemisphere aligned and this is this is important i just say look i'm a realist on this and i want to make sure that the american people are not suffering through a recession and i want to make sure the american people are not dealing with russia knocking on our door three hours from miami um inflation is a dangerous thing we are looking at a stagflation environment right now i said yesterday on the program we're looking at a recessionary environment right now. I think the markets are going to continue to be extremely volatile. Take the opportunity, if you are a long-term investor, to watch carefully. I do believe that when the VIX starts moving above 34, historically over time, you can go back to 1991 on this data. What you've seen is that in 12 months, the S&P 500 tends to be higher. Joining me right now to talk more about all this crazy, crazy inflation that the world is looking at, I have Charlie Dombeck back with us from Key City Capital, who I think was his sort of stunned as me and yet not stunned, right, when we saw that 7.9% read on inflation on Thursday. Welcome back, Charlie. It's great to be here, Trish. Thanks for having me back. So I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, you know, I hate to say I told you so. And, and I would just say for any viewer of this program, they know how worried I have been about inflation. And uh, they, they should know how worried you've been as well, because you've been on this program um, repeatedly saying, look, this is the new reality. I, I think it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. What's your sense? Absolutely. You know, um, had the Ukraine crisis been a short lived event, possibly we could have seen less pressure on inflation. But wars do three things to the economy. You know, the military demands on top of civilian needs put pressure on a productive economy. And if you factor in the embargoes and the sanctions, you further exacerbate issues with the supply chain. Um, and when you factor all these things in, and then governments, of course, have to print money to finance a, a war event, you're going to have increased inflationary pressure on top of an already uh, troublesome issue. So I think even though we saw rates at 7.9%, we could go as high as 10%, like you said, by summer driving season. Um, this is not a short-term event. We are gonna have a prolonged crisis in Ukraine, wow. and that's gonna further exacerbate the issue we have at hand. So with all this in mind, um, where, does it, where does it really leave the American consumer? Well, think about the increases, 38% increase in gas prices. I think it was um, an 8.6% increase in food prices. Mm -hmm. This really hits the middle American. It hits people that are on a fixed income. It puts a lot of pressure on people's monthly budgets who have a fixed income. And what you're going to see ultimately is potentially an impact that would possibly result in stagflation, where potentially you could move into a recessionary environment based upon the price increases that are really impacting the middle American. 
So you're preaching to the choir on this because this has been my fear all along. And this was prior to the war in Ukraine. Um, I, I had a lot of concerns about a low growth, very inflationary environment. Um, and, and now it's just escalated, right? Because I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're looking at $9 a gallon by the height of the summer, busy summer driving season, if we don't find a way to sort of fill the gap with this Russian oil that we're now missing. And by the way, it's, you know, we can't just think of it within the sphere of the U.S., Charlie, right? You have to think about all that natural gas, all that oil that's coming offline for all of Europe. They're talking about cutting their dependence on Russian nat gas by two thirds um, by the end of the year. So as they wean themselves off, as we, you know, pull the cord, so to speak, the entire world suffers from this lack of energy access and therefore higher prices, do they not? Absolutely. And certainly the supply chain has the ability over time to adjust on the fact that we're not going to have Russian oil or natural gas, but it, there's a lead time that it takes domestic producers to ramp up production, to get drilling back going and get wells producing. And certainly we have the Keystone Pipeline, which has been shut down, which could have helped. So domestically, we have a bit of a runway to be able to ramp up production to take care of the shortfall in supply. So this problem is not going to go away anytime soon. And certainly in California, we're going to see $9 a gallon gas. Um, unheard of. It's almost a perfect storm between the inflationary pressures that we've been experiencing just from the structural issues in the economy and now the whole thing with Ukraine. It is literally a perfect storm. Wow. Um, okay. So now that we know that, I mean, I, I like to give people, you know, some tangible sort of what to do information as well. Um, look, I, I've said all along you need a diversified portfolio. You've got to think about the portfolio that performs well over a, a long period of time in an inflationary environment. Because even if everything got solved, which it's not going to, with this energy crisis tomorrow, we're still in this very inflationary environment. I mean, we're spending all kinds of money. We're printing still all kinds of money. I realize the Fed's pulling back, but meanwhile, Congress is coming in with one and a half billion dollars now in spending. So it, it, it is what it is. And I think as, a, as an investor, you kind of need to be prepared Part of that preparation includes real estate. Walk us through what you guys do. Well, a number of things. Um, when we last spoke on the show, we talked about the volatility in the market. I think we had just had a 600 day yeah. gain in the markets. And we both talked about how unsustainable those gains are in today's environment. And the rule of the day is really, we're gonna see increased volatility in the markets like we haven't seen before. We're gonna have some days where we're up five or 600 or more points, but they're artificial gains. They are not sustainable. I would think that the market over the next seven to nine months could see a further 10% correction. So again, it's about taking profits off the table, repositioning your portfolio into a defensive position, putting assets in commodities, putting assets in inflation protected investments, rental real estate, debt based instruments, those investments will do well. They will cash flow. Uh, in fact, rent inflation was up 4.2% last month compared to February of the prior year. That's the largest increase since 2007. In our markets, rents are up north of 10% compared to this time last year, where we have high demand states and population shifts. So those asset classes are absolutely the best place to hedge against inflation. Worst case, you're going to cash flow at 9 to 11 percent. We're still going to see rent increases. We're still going to see appreciation in these high performing markets. That's where I would park my capital. Uh, it's a great hedge against what's happening in the economy, what's happening with the supply chain, what's happening with gas prices. And one of the things that really I think makes you interesting and, and your vehicle really interesting is it's people could think of it a little bit as, as a private equity investment for everyday folks. Um, in other words, you still have to be an accredited investor, but there's you're, you're in a space that um, is, is seeking capital from people that aren't billionaires or, you know, <laughs> have $200 million in, in the bank. Um, you're looking at wealthier individuals, accredited 
individuals, but nonetheless people who really haven't typically accessed this kind of vehicle before, in part because, you know, the, the really Fidelities and the Charles Schwab's of the, of the world don't really offer it. So we serve a community that is largely underserved by their team of financial professionals. And our target audience is typically people that make $250,000 or more a year and have a net worth between a million and $20 million. And if you think about the team that supports those individuals, you have a CPA, you have maybe one or two attorneys, you have an insurance agent, and then largely you have one individual that manages your financial capital, predominantly invested in the financial markets. And you get conflicting advice. There's salesmanship that's embedded in the advice that you get. There's self-interest. And typically that audience grows their wealth at maybe 8 to 10% at best over a lifetime. That's slow growth. And the investments that we offer are private placements. And they're not investments that you can typically get from a financial advisor because they can't earn commissions and fees from placements into these investments. Yeah. So we're able to offer something that's not typically available in the general financial market. And what you find is there's actually less risk in these private placements. They are counter-correlated typically to the economic cycles like we're experiencing right now. And they typically perform from a rate of return perspective at three to four times uh, your average rate of return in the financial market. So great diversification tool, great way to accelerate the way you grow wealth, an amazing hedge against inflation and sort of the volatility that we're experiencing in today's market. And that's been what I have observed as a practicing CPA for nearly 30 years. This is how clients accelerate the way they grow your wealth. And lastly, I would say, in every one of these types of private placement investments, there's a tax strategy embedded where the gains and the income that you earn oftentimes doesn't drop onto the 1040. So if you have mm -hmm. income from your job, a profession or a business that you own that places you in a high marginal rate of taxation, why pay tax on dollars you don't need to live off of today? So these private placements do a really good job of accelerating wealth by doing two things keeping income off the 1040 and improving overall investment performance. That well, is the I, I, road. Go ahead. That is the roadmap to financial independence and success. Well, everybody wants that. Believe me, financial independence and success. I think uh, while protecting what you have is just such a, an important and aspirational and achievable goal. So if people want more information, I'm just going to tell them they should go to Key City Capital, keycitycapital.com slash Trish, my name, T-R-I-S-H, because you'll be able to get to Charlie directly that way. Um, and I, I think it's just worth checking out. I, I, I think that in this kind of environment, you want to be prudent, you want to be thoughtful, you want diversification, and you want a tax strategy. I should mention, right? You know, tax season is, is, is here. Um, you, you want a tax strategy as well that's going to help you as you move forward. So we appreciate you coming on the show and uh, giving all this information, Charlie. It's great to be here. I'm thankful to be part of the show. Thank you. I want to remind you that I am going to be over on Locals this afternoon live. I've taken your questions. I love our little community there. Come join our group. You can help support the show. You can interact directly with me. Again, that's trishregan.locals.com, trishregan.locals.com. Follow me on Twitter, Trish underscore Regan. You're going to learn a lot of information. I have broken a lot of news there, including most recently, I was the first reporter, the only reporter, about 48 hours before it happened to tell you that two Americans were going to be freed out of Venezuela. So make sure you join me there. I've been warning about inflation and all of that that's coming our way. And I'll see you on Facebook, if you're there on Facebook, at Real Trish Regan. And I want you to have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Do make sure to go to the website, trishintel.com. Sign up for my newsletter. You can shop our store there, only there, trishintel.com only there or on the trishregan.store because apparently there's a there's some other people out there that want to kind of copycat um so i i want to encourage you to get the authentic merchandise there at trishregan.store or trishintel.com and i will see you on monday